Now, if you want to add a little bit of spice to your command line interface, uh, you should add some color. So instead of just saying, you know, hello there, in the same color as what we had inputted, we could actually do better. So I'm going to create a new application called Spice, and let's show you how to dig in and uh, add a dependency on colored. I don't normally spell colored like that. I usually use a U, so I've been calling it a sort of color red or colored, but it's just colored. <laughs> Uh, and now we can go into source to slash main and then we have our little rust application and we use colored uh, let me kind of first show you how you could possibly go wrong uh, over here we have not done the right thing so it turns out that this is just a module what we need to actually include is the traits that extend string slices uh, and the other thing that will be a little bit confusing let's say I wanted to print this out as blue I just add a blue method uh, and if I write we actually see that we get a problem saying that blue cannot be found in this scope uh, everything gets a bit confused we have some way you know some wavy red line or in, in our case uh, yellow lines so uh, and ignore all the horrible error message up there uh, instead what I need to do is sort of use this as an actual variable and then print line c comes in and it should now work if I save uh, blue is now happy and I can just oh there's a whole bunch of uh, messages from the colorized trait and I'll just say on yellow blue on yellow kind of is garish enough to, for a demo so that's useful now this isn't going to be the say the right colors because I've got a purple screen and <laughs> so we have yellow and uh, <laughs> teal instead of yellow and blue but I hope that's enough to kind of pique your interest uh, the colored crate is quite easy to use it's just we annotate a uh, what do we annotate we annotate a string slice with some extra methods and here it is here it's version 2 it's been stable for a long time there are lots of examples to play with and oh, actually we can uh, see one of them right now just for fun oh can I go around example takes one ah you know what that was because we need to actually go and download say the code which is a little bit longer but now that I'm halfway there I may as well go and show you how to do that if we go into the repository and then I go and clone it uh, get clone uh, get the actual code itself and colored and now I run the example I want most simple oh gosh this is going to take a little bit of time it's got to go and compile aha why it works this also works why not push things a little bit further so that's most simple and what about nested colors Ta-da! Hello world, la la la. Uh, so I'll just go and look at the code. So if I go into examples, you can see here that most simple was the first one we used and nested colors was the second. And we want most simple to start with. We can see we've called green and then blue and bolded it, yellow, bold. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things that we can do. We can actually have a string and uh, gradually build it up. Uh, alternatively, we can call it just once. So that's useful. And let's take a look very quickly at nested colors. So examples, nested colors. And 
it's actually interesting that they we've still got the pre 25th uh, 2018 uh, syntax in here so it is a very oldish crate but also kind of interesting and it's using them in a nested way so what does that mean oh i see uh, over here on line 14 we have our um, internal macro and that is an exam oh so this has been formatted so we've got a variable and then we're all there well what that's good. <laughs> have fun playing around with color. Uh, don't have an, a bare terminal if you can help.